Hemshachayim Beis, Volume One, Chapter Fifty Nine, Page One O Nine, Kuftes, Discourse Fifteen. In Chapter Fifty Eight, the Rebbe Rashab explained the power and impact of transcendence, of transcendent energy. In one sentence, transcendence is everywhere, but completely concealed. And he explained how Sevev, Makif, the transcendent energy, is the force that brings existence into into being, even though the details and the shape of it comes through the imminent energy, is the transcendent energy that makes it happen, the desire, the rotsen, that God wants existence. It also is the force that brings the life energy that comes through imminent energy also into being. As explained with the Beis Amigdash, the temple. I'm sorry, before that, just that, 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 that being itself, because the imminent energy ultimately is expressing that which the transcendent energy is is conveying. And also the additional energy that comes into existence at special times, like in the time of the temple, the Beis Amigdash, that also comes from the Rotsen, Ace Rotsen, from the from the transcendent energy. So however you twist it, wherever you go, there is transcendence that is informing and shaping existence. Yet, it's completely concealed. And that's why it's makif, because it retains the qualities of what it is like in its source, and in its source, it's only er gili etzem, gili mina etzem, it's only revealing its source, that's all it is. It doesn't have that other function. So when it manifests in existence, it remains this type of transcendent energy, whereas manifest energy, imminent energy, is measured and defined from its source in order to define existence, in order to create existence and to shape existence. Therefore, it's commensurate with it. And as being commensurate with it, it is uh, it's part of it. It's not shalei barach, as it says. If existence had come from a malak from the imminent energy, it would not be the yesh that we have. It would be proportionate to that type of energy. So it manifests within existence, and in, in the distinction of existence, the schalkos, the, div, the, div, the diversity, all the differences that he spoke earlier between rotsen and kreches, between desire and faculties, and which he's been discussing in the last few chapters, between er and shefa, between light um, or energy and shefa, a substantive flow of transmission, is now coming together and the difference between how these two energies, transcendent and imminent energy, work. But the focus here has been on the transcendent energy. And the last few lines, the last section of the chapter, was about this, that there's no distinction. There's no ischalkas, not in the way it radiates. Whereas the, the, the faculties, the imminent energy, each, 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 each energy is fitting and tailored to its particular container. And also the energy itself is different. As a result, there's ten spheres in the energy, as we've been discussing at length. Whereas in Makif, in Sevev, in the transcendent energy, it doesn't penetrate an internalized way into the containers and into existence. Therefore, there's no distinction there. And also, the energy itself is Lamaila Mishalkos. But now, that poses a question. That poses a question, which he's going to discuss now in chapter 59. That question is as follows Omnam Adain Sarak However, we still have to understand. Aren't there makifim pratim, meaning distinct and individualized makifim, the transcendent energies, to each of the individual worlds? In the beginning of the Hamshach, the first chapter, he established that there's a keser in each world. There's keser of Atzilas, there's keser of Bria, of Yitzir, Asiyah. Each world has its own desire that that world should be the way it is. So not only is the imminent energy distinguished between one level and the next, 
isn't there a makif for each world? Yes, it's true, as you said earlier, there's a makif kloli, the eagle hagodl, when, when it says that Simpson concealed all the energy, and what remained was a transcendent energy that was not entering into the black hole of the Tzimtzum. The only thing that enters afterwards is the thin ray, the kav. So that's that, yes. So that makif is, encompasses everything. But we also know there's makif in pratim, the prate elements. Each world has its eagle. Like in Eitzchayim, he says that the kav goes and makes a circle, then there's another circle, another circle. Each particular world has its own makif. Like keser of atzilus. It's the makif of Atzillus. The kasa is the rotsa, the desire of Atzillus. There's kasa of Bria. All the way to kasa of Asiya. Meaning each world. Shazel madregis pratis b'chinus makif ha'alyan. This is in specific levels. Meaning one level is different than another. In the makif ha'alyan. In the higher uh, transcendent energy. Shamakif l'chol ha'elem l'fiyad ha'elem ahu. It surrounds. Or you can say it transcends each world according commensurate to that world. Or else, why is it be called makif and protim? If there's only one makif, there's no kesher of atzilus. It should be one kesher, and that's it. We know there's a kesher of atzilus of bria. Each world has its transcendent force. Imkei yeshes chalkas madregas gam ba'er makif. And if so, there are divis- the, 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 the individual levels, diverse levels, and um, and, um the, uh, Diverse levels in the Ermakif also. Which contradicts what he just said. If you read the last, last lines of the last chapter. Now, you could argue, you know what, maybe all these Kessas are one thing. But the fact is, it's called Kessa Atzil. So he says, so for surely... You in a day you cannot compare the er makif, the transcendent surrounding energy. Surround again. We don't mean surround. We don't. Mean, we mean that it's not commensurate. It's not with, manifest within the containers in a way that can be appreciated, inter, internalized, integrated, and so on. So it's, for sure, there's no. You cannot compare the er makif of atzilus to the er makif of bria. Just like atzilus is a different world than the world of bria. The two different worlds, so also the makif of each one is different. That's why this is called Kasser of Atzilus, and this one's called Kasser of Bria. So seemingly here we have a contradiction to what he said before. Before he said that's imminent energy that manifests within existence on its terms that is uh, distinguishable level by level, and here a makif doesn't have it, and here we said that makif does have levels. So he's not going to answer this question. Who, however, the Indian in this is <coughs> usually in Chassidus when it says when the question, the answer, sometimes you say Yesh Lamer, Yesh Lataritz. We can say or we can answer, but usually it's what the Rebbe Shab uses Acha Indian who, which is it's a little more broader than just question and answer. You know, start questions and answer. Yeah. He he's elaborating. So Acha Inyan is like more of the, in the, now the truth. The Inyan in this is so it's more than just okay. Ask me a question. Here's an answer. It's almost like when you give an answer that from the root that answers many other questions. What he's really going to do is give us an, a deeper perspective on the whole subject matter. Now, is this question is not like a question. Oh, I made a statement and now you found a contradiction. It's like setting it up. This is, he knew when he wrote this that it's going to come. He didn't find some one place. This is a fundamental topic that there's makifim in all the worlds. So this is basically an opportunity, in other words, to go deeper into the whole concept of transcendence. This is what he's adding now. The er makif has al kaponim, the word he's been using, meaning at minimum, it has some relationship with the pnimi, with the imminent. In the last chapter, he spoke about how transcendence is everywhere, and it affects, affects everything. But he didn't make the statement that has a shaykhus to, to pnimi. Obviously, it has a connection, you know, because uh, if, if, uh, if the, it's the physical existence of the yesh is because of the power of the makif, of the transcendent, 
and the Pnimi and so to speak is informed by that in order to implement, like I said, the paintbrush that makes the details. So clearly they have a relationship, but he didn't emphasize that relationship. There the point was more that there is makif, the Pnimi, that he said like in the beginning of the chapter, that Sevev is not... It's not in the world. There the Chiddush in the last chapter that manifests in the world in one way or another. Now he's creating a connection between the Makif and the Primi. Like we learned earlier, chapter 52, the example of the Nefesh. Nefesh, you know, usually you just want to say technically Nefesh really should be defined as spirit. Because when you say Neshama, you're already talking about a yeah, certain element, Neshama usually refers to the divine, you know, there's Nefesh, Ruch, Neshama. Generally speaking, Nefesh, we say, Kechus nefesh or you say, the example of a Nefesh. He's not talking, he doesn't want to talk about divine, not divine. I remember when we discussed it, people were asking, Nefesh al Nefesh Abamis. Nefesh al Nefesh and Chesidus is just talking about the general life force. Almost like the biological life force. When I say biological, I mean that, in other words, the thing we could all agree upon, we're not even getting into deeper levels. The fact that there's a life force inside of a being, the difference between a corpse, God forbid, and a, and a, and a live human being. Whatever that life, however you define that life source. So the example, let's say, of the desire of the nefesh, the erotzen ha-nefesh, kechus ha-nefesh, is neutral in this context. It's only relevant, the example, how does life, how does the soul, how does the spirit give life to the being? I mean, you can use soul, spirit, it's, it's interchangeable. I just wanted to emphasize that when we say nefesh, you're not talking here in the context of, you know, was it a divine nefesh, the divine soul, the animal soul, the levels of the soul. Here it's talking very broadly just the general idea, the general example of nefesh is that, is that context. So, Makom, Makom, I'm sorry, Commission is well paid, nefesh, but nefesh, the example of the nefesh, remember we're working with two examples here throughout these chapters. One is the example of Eir HaShemesh, the sunlight. And the second is the example of the Eir V'chayis HaNefesh, the life force of the nefesh. These are two excellent examples in transmission of energy. Because really when you sum up everything we've been learning here, it's all been about transmitting. How a source transmits or emits. As I explained, emit is when a source has energy and it just emits. A transmit is usually that the source is elsewhere. And there's the middle interface that transmits from the source to the recipient. In truth, as you could say, God is the real emitter of energy. Even Eir and Shefa and all the other tools and, and, and channels are the transmitters. And we are the recipients. But the truth is, as we know, God can't even be called an emitter. Because he's not defined by being, uh, he's not. The sun is an emitter of, the sun does not, is, the moon is a transmitter. Because it reflects the sunlight and it gives it to us. The sun is self-generating. It self-generates its own energy from within it. So in a sense it's in, emitting. Just again, language. But the point being here is that everything has been discussed is really, which is the whole key to the whole interface altogether. We exist down here. When we're blinded and myopic, we just see ourselves, self-absorbed ego creatures, taking care of their daily interests, as each of us knows. And Chesidus, Teira, Yiddishkeit is coming to teach us there's something more than you, basically. No. Like someone said, Meida, ani lefanecha. You say in the mornings, Meida, I'm Meida, that ani is not lefanecha. You know, that there's you, and then everything else. So you start with it. So you come to realize there's more than you, which is God. Just simple awareness. And that, that itself, is, as we know, takes a lot of work just to be aware of that in a, in a cognizant way, in a real way. You know, Levitzuk Berdichev once called together the entire city of Berdichev. It was a Tuesday afternoon. Everybody come to Shul. You know, but this Bedicha was calling everyone. There must be some decree in heaven, some gzeda, and you have to get together. So everybody came, men, women, children. They closed their shops. They all showed up. The Bedicha clapped on the table. It was 3 o'clock in the afternoon on the dot when everybody arrived. Banged on the table on the bim, and he said, he wants to let everyone know that there's a Rebbeinu Shalelem in the world. And that was it. That's all he wanted. So there's no decree Sometimes you just have to be reminded that God exists. That is also a nice, you know, you don't, now why do we need to learn a whole I am base for that? Because to exist is not that he exists is one thing. The second is to internalize. So the whole process of what he's discussing 
is obviously the interface. How do we get there? How do we connect? Not only how do we connect, how do we maintain the connection? That's even more important. You know, to connect from time to time, we all get inspired. Maintenance contracts are more expensive than the initial visit. Maintaining it means that you have, on a daily basis and internalizing it. So Ben basically, especially in the last chapters, he's been discussing this whole idea. But again, he says, Lahoven, to understand all this better, it ain't soft. You, know, you always think, like, what was missing until here? We learned already 55, 52 chapters. What was missing is missing. In the big picture, he, what he's adding in the last, I would say, last 10 chapters, 50, from, from Nun Vav, from, I'm sorry, from, um, we started Lahoven in the of this new section, Nun, Nun Gimel, 53, now in 59, is explain these different types of transmissions, basically, or emissions. So we talked about Er, the Shefa. And that's essentially similar to Ratzon and Kreichus. And now he's tying it up and discussing the details of it. So now he's, he's talking about the relationship. So one type of emission, as we said, is a transcendent emission. It remains detached, aloof, apart from the object of what it is, where it's emitting to. It's detached. That's Er, generally. The mile of that is that the source is not impacted by it. So it's a good example that God can emit energy, give life, impact us, but not be impacted in return. What's the downside of Ur? That it's not internalized. Shefa, and the examples he gave for Shefa, of course, is the simple example, just any transmission you give someone's dukkha, the, the, the flow of water, and of course, the energy flow that when you invest in throwing something or drawing something and so on. And then, of course, the ultimate example is the teacher. There, there's absolute investment, invested energy. It's not, it's not dispassionate energy. It's relevant where it goes and if the student is how it's prepared and so on. So there, there's distinctions. Makif, seemingly there are no distinctions. So now the question on the table is, isn't there a makif in each world? So there's also distinctions in makif. So he's beginning to answer there's a relationship now between makif and primi. Has at minimum a kaponim some relationship with the imminent. Like we learned earlier, chapter 52, in the example of the nefesh, of the spirit that gives life. That the internal faculties, meaning like whether it's intelligence or emotions or sight or sound, they cannot grasp, they cannot relate directly to desire. But the Ratzon, the desire, definitely grasps them and defines them, all the faculties, and is connected, it connects itself with them. Because it impacts them. When you desire to move your hand and so on, the desire is definitely having a direct impact. That was the whole point that he made. That the desire is nitfus, but not... That, that, I'm sorry, the, the, the desire is tefus, but not nitfus. It means it affects, but it's not affected in return. So the krechas can't relate to the desire. They just listen to its orders. Whereas on a relationship, so there's no relationship between Rats and the desire and the faculties, but there is definitely an impact. Rak, shayishchabas, enu b'chines hisarvus mamish. Only thing is, this is chabas, this attachment, this connection, is not hisarvus mamish. It doesn't mingle, doesn't mix with them. Lies mislabish and mizgal behem. In a way that it becomes manifest and revealed within them. Rak mishabri mom behelem. It connects with them in a concealed way. So, for example, a person could have his hand is working perfectly. You have no desire to move it, no desire to draw, no desire to throw something, for example. So fine, your hand is, is alive. Maybe it has its own, whatever. But desire is what gets it going. Obviously, if the hand was not alive, God forbid, the desire, if a desire, that would be like a, a paralyzed part of the body. We're not talking about that. So no desire. So what's the relationship between the desire and the movement? Well, the movement wouldn't happen at all without the desire, Period. But the, but, the, but the faculties don't relate to it. The faculties just take an order. Okay, you want me? I'll move my hand. Fine. Whereas, for example, when he spoke about, let's say, how the mind and the brain work, 
the brain is more refined and do more mezuchach, it actually draws more energy. So there's a relationship between the energy and the container. Like the relationship between a teacher and a student. The, t- the student is more receptive, the teacher will give more. The student is more refined, the teacher will, will the flow will be bit deeper. With Ratzon, it doesn't work that way. Ratzon does not reckon with the hand, it doesn't say, I, that's, I want, I want. Like some places, it brings about a tinus column. Even the body doesn't want to fast, the desire says, today we're fasting, and that's it. We're not asking questions. There's no relationship. There's an order, a command. So there's definitely a relationship in the sense, like you're saying, there's a schabrus, but it's not a schabrus, as in when, a, when there's two forces that are communicating with each other. It's similar to when, you know, the difference between, we said, uh, shevtayich and yeritzayich. A shevet commands, gives you the order, the authority. You go into a rebbe and he gives you, this, this, is this is what you're supposed to do. You go into an advisor, a friend, a consultant, there's a relationship, there's a discussion. So it's nice So the attachment is only concealed. The Sagili, the Gili is the Rotson is the only one that's dictating the way you do things here. That's the example. The same thing in the supernal will, meaning the higher will, God's will. which is the level of the transcendent energy. He has at minimum some type of achiza, some achiza is like tfisa in a way, but some type of grasp, some type of holding on to. Achiza is more than that. But since something is nechaz, it's like catching. When you say, let's say, a fire, you light a fire on a piece of wood, so you know, the Gemara, it says that sometimes it catches nechaz, sometimes it doesn't catch. So, obviously that's a physical example, huh? Tfisa is more than achiza. Probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tfisa is more than achiza. But I'll come yeah, but he's been using mostly Tvisa, but here he wants to use a chiz. I think here almost like a couple of years ago, there's some achiz, there's some, uh, something is going on. There's some, some hold, yeah. Chibur and, and, and connection, attachment, chibur. In all these words are critical. Shaykh, is a relationship I've been using. Chibur is when two things, mechubur, are attached or connected. The misarvus is more mixed together when you mix like like liquids mixed together. I mean, right? There's also hiskashus that's not used in here. Commotion is by a little pedic of Zion, like we learned earlier, chapter 27. The sherish makif for my air makif the essence of the sagnusus. I'm sorry, the sherish air pnimi that the root of the air pnimi. What is the root of the air pnimi of the kav and then the energy that goes into the containers is from the. Root of it is from the Ermakiv, the Esesri Sagnusis. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, 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 stop. Erprimum Ermakiv. Because we learned then, he's going to say it here, that what happens, the Er Habligvul, the infinite energy with infinite possibilities, there's infinite spheres, Kedem Alei Sadatsun, in that energy arose a desire, Alei Sadatsun. So in the, in the, like we spoke about the artist, he has infinite possibilities, and then arose one possibility. He's now defining, I want to do it this way, not this way. Ten spheres. Well, the possibilities draw. I want to draw. Or okay, I, fine, yeah. But uh, yeah, but it goes even further. He also talks about the details. I wanted to draw on this. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but yes, the spheres of Spinoza is, uh, is, is the beginning of... of, of the, the root of the yeah, But yeah. it's rooted, but that is rooted in the Armakiv before oh. it. I mean, everything else the is from the Armakiv. Well, there is no everything. There's only two things here. So there's no other, anything else. <laughs> there's, no, there's nothing else going on. Um, no, but this is a specific, this is a specific statement. It means that an artist who can draw a thousand different or infinite types of art, there's a level where there's no spheres altogether. He mentioned that earlier. There's, we're not talking about that right now. Then there's a level where the sphere is saying, it can go many different ways. You have air, and it has no definition, no limits, and so on. And then within that Eir HaBligvul, that's the expression he uses, Shir Atzmei, he allocates, he envisions, he, uh, what do we say, evaluates, he, he assesses, we had all these words, he measures a particular amount of energy, in particular that this is going to go. It's still all in the source. That's why before the Tzimtzum, it's all, doesn't have, it's Pshittus Mamash, as he said. It's, not, it's only a so-called potential, but it's already risen in, inside that state. 
That is the beginning, he says. That's rooted in the Ramachadah. This is the words he used there, and he's saying it here again. The ten hidden spheres, what Eden Sef Ablikvul, the infinite energy, meaning the transcendent, Shir Atzba Atzmai, measured within himself, or allocated within himself, Lahoyer B'midavagvul, to radiate in the form of Midavagvul. In other words, it could have been a different way. You could have had Atzmus, and Atzmus has two paths. One is Eid Ablikvul goes here, Eid Agvul is here, and that's that. Now, in truth, is these two are also rooted in two aspects of Atmos, his power to reveal, his power to conceal. But the way it works practically, it's not that there's two different relationships. He made sure that the Gvul comes from the Bligvul. This is critical in the real interface, because you want that the, that the Gvul should have transcendence in it. That's the whole point here. You know, it would be a lot simpler and easier to understand. Why do you mix the two? It's like sending two messengers. One is a messenger that's here to tell you that there's a king and, uh, and and you have to listen to everything he says. And then there's another messenger who comes and tells you the king wants you to do this and this today. God is not sending two messengers. He's sending one message because he wants you to know that even in the details of your life there's also the bigger transcendence aspect. So Er HaGvul comes to Er HaBligvul. This is a key component in the interface. So just it's not a small matter. The whole structure is beyond, is beyond structure. Absolutely. And that was even before Montora too. Yeah, but then it was not revealed. Then the way they couldn't access it. You know, it's always, it was, in essence, it's there. The question is, you know, Matan Torah, what Matan Torah did gave us the, the bridge. You know, Atmos, of course. It all comes down to, remember, there's a reason Matan Torah didn't happen in the beginning. Because God wanted the Erag Vul to do the best it could in its efforts. You reach as good as you can. And then, when you've earned that, it's like Shavuos, after, we don't count the 50th day. But you can't get to 50 without 49. So the first work on yourselves, that's the Ovis. They work as best as they could. I mean, they did a great job. It became, it says, Ovis and Merkava, 24-7, they breathe God. Everything was godliness. But it was godliness, Shmi Havaya Lenidaitila. They didn't have Havaya. So then God says, okay, now that you've reached that, now we'll introduce something deeper. Havaya Remember. Havai is you no know, Havai is bligvul. Havai is a transcendent energy yeah, yeah. being manifesting revealed. Bligvul. Yeah, manifesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. So look, remember everything is above time. The creation itself is such that there's the era gvul, era bligvul. What, what basically later he's going to discuss this specifically after Shavuos Ayin Gimel he starts says clearly the two levels the air of the Ovis and the air of Matan Teda exactly this is discussed. That's when I began actually learning with you guys. That, huh? That's Chapter 170. Yeah. Anyway, but to go back here, so what is he saying? So we see in the root the connection between Er Makif and Primi. This is fascinating. In other words, he's going to explain how Er Makif, there are levels in it because of this. Okay, so therefore, okay, that's number one. Okay, so Er Makif, poiled by Er Primi. And also, Kamoy Kena, similarly, and the same, and also, additionally, Kamoykein is more, not additionally, that would be Vernesif. Well, so, huh? so, so too, or moreover. Or, or, so t- no, no, so too. Ha'er makif, the transcendent energy, poil by er pnimi, affects, impacts in the imminent energy. Be'ifani ha'giluim shal er pnimi, li'ez k'fi efen ha'ratzen. In the way the revelations, specific revelations, come from of, of the Arpanimi, of the imminent, that it should be aligned with the Ratzin, with the desire, which is the Makif of of the source. In other words, what he just added with the second line is not just that it's rooted there, and then afterwards they're both are the separate agents. Even afterwards, it always remains. The Arpanimi always retains. That it is was rooted in that place, so therefore the Er Makiv is always influencing and impacting, like we said in the last chapter, even the revelations. As I said, you could argue that it's just a one-time thing, and that's it. It's let, let's take the example of the artist. You could have two different ways. You could say, okay, once he's allocated that he's going to create this piece of art, all the other possibilities are gone for now, not within the artist, within the piece of art. 
Or you could say no. When he's making this piece of art, if you look deep, deep enough and you study it well, you're going to see also the other aspects of the artist that are, are, are there that were able to do otherwise. In other words, you'll see a certain wisdom. You'll see that he's not confined by this piece of art. Or you could say he is. Clearly here the picture is that even in the, 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 even in the finite, in the eminent energy, is always being informed by the infinite energy, transcendent energy. That is uh, an, an unbelievable idea. It would be like when you hear two, type, two types of teachers. One teacher, they, both brilliant teachers, both convey the idea very well. But one, you, you, you get the idea, but you, have no, you don't sense that there's more to it, or the teacher has a lot more to give. Then another one, you say, you know what, I got it, but there's no question in my mind that this idea, the way he conveyed it, there's a whole other dimension to it. That means that even in the era Gvul, as it's revealed, also contains and retains that element of it. And you see that. You see that all the time. The different types of people who communicate. You see a certain er makif remains even when the er primi is, is radiating. And now since, and now that, and, and, and since, and as a result of, and now that after the fact that we know that the makif, the transcendent has a relationship with the imminent, imkain, shaykh bezegamki, makif kloli, makif prati. That's the case. There's also Shaykh. You could also say that it's also possible to have a Makif Klol and a Makif Prati. Uh, uh, a general transcendence and a specific transcendence. If they had no relationship, so you could say, you know what? In the, in the imagery, as I said before, if the artist's other possibilities or the transcendent element of the artist, of the creator, of the source remains detached, so there's one Makif surrounds everything. But since there's a connection, a relationship between them, so now you can start beginning to understand that you could also say there are levels in the, in the makif, relatively speaking, obviously. For who? What is that? Harots and bechlal. Makif kloli is the general desire, bechlal osayelimus. What you just said before. The general desire that he wants all the worlds, ve'ishtalshlus, and the cosmic order. So you can say, in the Ir Habigvul, where there was infinite possibilities, arose Allah Baritzene, Alesa Rotsen, arose a desire for the general worlds. He wants a building, a structure. And then there's a second type of makif, a second Rotsen. And then there is, within that itself, there's a desire for each particular world. I want to have Atsilas, Briya, Yitzira, Asiya. So right there you have the two levels, the two states. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very good. What are these levels? Now the Makif HaKloli, we speak Makif HaKloli, the general transcendent energy is the Ratzna Poshet, is the simple, seamless Shapeless desire in the infinite light before the tzimtzum shaola beretzene it arose in his will and his desire lahaitzil olivre to emanate and to create general everything lahaitzil olivre you see right there atzilus ambriya haredot zezel al kol seish talsu shakel hako this desire is on the entire cosmic order which encompasses everything vuhu pchinis tehiri elah shalifni at tzimtzum. This is the state, this is the stage, the level that we call Tehira Yilah. Tehira, as I said, meant, uh, Tehira comes from the world, so tired of purity, but Tehira means radiance, light, uh, the higher light. It's an expression from, from Zayhar and from Kabbalah. Usually Tehira Yilah, the Rebbe has a footnote in the Ranat about this. Where he talks about the difference when he talks with Tehiri Law to Tato, the Alter Rebbe, the Samach Tzadik writes, the Alter Rebbe sometimes used Tehiri Law and Ak after the Tzimtzum. But generally speaking, Tehiri Law is the Eir Lifniat Tzimtzum. It's another like Katsil is the Klolos. And Tehiri Tato is Ak, is the first energies, the first levels after the Tzimtzum. He mentioned Tehiri Tato earlier. Where was that? Remember what chapter? Just a few chapters back. Mm. Tehira basically means like a pure form, the purest form. Yeah. Like, uh, there's no substance, just pure, a pure form. Pure energy yeah. is usually how it's referred to. Pure. 
But Tahira also, I think, believe it's like Zehar also comes from the word Tahira. It's like it's inside Tahara, it also, I think, comes from the word Nahura, like uh, Tahira as in also Air. Yeah, I don't think it means Tahara in this case. It means like. No, uh, right, no, it means like more like. Uh, the purity that is, there's nothing there, there's not, nothing mixed in. Tahara. Right, right. It's an Aramaic word, Tahira, it's with a Vov. Um, where was the Tahira, the Ta? Do you remember? Anybody? Hmm? Okay, we'll find it later. Fine. Okay, so this is Tehira Ilah, Shalifni Atzimtzum. Ukamaimer, and here's where the source is. You may know the Zehar, this is Zehar, is brought often in Chesidus, but Reish from Menusad the Malka. Gol of Galifu b'Tehiri Elah. This we learn first time we learn in Tavshin Gimel, but it's from Zayhar, the beginning of Zayhar. And obviously pages are written on this expression. What means Bereish from Nisan to Malka? Yeah. So the beginning of so-called the domain. Her is from the word Rishus, but also Bereish from Nisan to Malka meaning when God first desired or first. Allocate, gave permission, I mean, you can say, but it's really when sometimes it speaks about the Rosh, but in the beginning, when God desired the Malka, is Gol of Galifu Batiri Law. Gol of Galifu means he engraved. Golif is from the word like Chikika. He engraved Gol of Galifu, that itself means he engraved engravings in this level called Tahiri Law. So he says, Basically, he means on somebody has a thought. Yeah, exactly. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's an example. So here, it's the goal of Glyph is going that in the Er Habligvul, he engraved, so to speak, the impression of the ten hidden spheres. That's what it's meaning here. Well, come on, goal of Glyph, but he loves Shazobchins, Hashoda, Mashaidin, so Shidr, Batsme, Kol Sayyidon, Zishtashis, the Migdash Melech, and the Zayr, that's how he interprets it. What does it mean? It means Gol law. That's the Hashara. That's the envisioning. That is the allocation, the, the defining within himself. Masha'erin of Shir Ba'atzmei, what he defined within himself. Kolos Elam Zvesh The general worlds and cosmic order. Remember, everything here is a Moshal. In the Kuntus and Yonah Shatera Sachsidis, the Rebbe explains, and elsewhere also, that the reason. Like the main Chiddush of the Alter Rebbe, besides Chiddush of Chassidus Chabad, the whole shit of Chassidus Chabad, was that everything came into a Moshe. In Eitz Chaim, when you read the Arizal, you'll find examples as well. There are examples there. But not to the extent, and definitely not bringing it down to our level. So you could say a Moshe is simply an example. A good teacher can explain it to another, in another idiom or another paradigm. He brings the idea. But no, the Rebbe says a Moshal is actually a lakus on a different level. When you give a child, when the Rebbe says, for example, when we, we, we have the custom when a child's brought to cheder, first time to school, so you throw candies to him and say, Malach Mochal is throwing these candies. So the Rebbe has a whole sikha, the whole story of the Friedrich Rebbe that he held the candies and came Pesach, Erev Pesach, they found candies in his pocket. He said he didn't want to throw it out because uh, Malach Mochal gave it to him. Why would he, you know, most kids just eat it up. So the Rebbe asked the question, what kind, of, what kind of chinuch is this? You're lying to a child, you know that the parents threw the candies, not Malach Mochol. The Rebbe has a whole sikh. It's an unbelievable sikh. The same thing you could argue is every time you get to tell a child, listen, if you learn, I'll give you a toy, I'll give you a candy, I'll reward you. What the child is being, so you're basically saying, you know, do it for the reward. And in general, what's Chanechal now, Pidarke? Why don't you tell the child, this is God wants you to do it, that's why you're supposed to do it. So, generally, the simple explanation is, First, you do ulterior motives, and then that brings you. But, like the Rebbe interprets, The Teich, the inner premise of this ulterior, is it's true, it is Malach Machal throwing the candies. The Shliach are the parents. When you give an example to a child about an idea, it's not just an outer example, that is the idea. Why are there candies in this world? Anything sweet in Gashmis is rooted in the sweetness of Ruchnis. Right. So when there's, that's the, pick, the word. It's not just an example. And, and, I, and therefore, like, um, 
uh, um, when the children, when grandmothers or mothers, they would smear honey and sugar on the page of olive base today, on a page of the Shablat of Tanya. Teach a child as Tate is the best of you know, Rajan Kizaman, the Reb would say, you know, the songs. That, is, that raisins and, and al- almonds are very Thanks. sweet, but the tater is the most sweet of all. Huh? Yeah. But the Rebbe, Rebbe brought this expression. Because the sweetness in this world is not only an example, it's nishtalshal, it's evolved from the sweetness in Ruchlis. We can't relate to that, so God gave us uh, uh, a way to relate to it. So you're not lying to the child, you're giving the child the same thing, but in that level. So the Musholim that Alta Rebbe gave in Chassidus of Kechus HaNefesh was he says that that before Kabbalah, he said, Rav Hill writes this, that Kabbalah gave us the idea of of, of etzem and his pastus. That is the etzem, like a sunlight. The sun is in one place, and it gives us an extension of its energy. See this added like Gilead Helen. When a soul gives life to a body, it's not just the soul is in one place and it's sending the energy elsewhere. Within the body itself, you're getting the energy. It's revealing its energy. When it comes to the body, the soul reveals its energy. And Hill says this. He writes this. And that's the Chiddush of Chiddush Chabad. That means the Mishalim are not just an example for something out there. They are that, revealing it on our level. And when, we under, when we're wise, we realize the Moshal is a lavush. It's like a garment. But in the garment is the whole king. Now we come to the king and we keep realizing there's all lavushim. Every level you go to is another example, another way to experience godliness. So this is the ultimate unity of Mepsari Echza Laka, from my flesh I behold God. Not just an example, okay, let's find an example. In my flesh, okay, it's an example for godliness. That's on a basic level. That No, this is godliness on a, on a Basar level, on a flesh level. Water is, is, is chesed, except it's concealed. You can't say it's chesed, because obviously water is not chesed of Atzillus, but it is chesed dressed up in a garment called water. And when you drink the water properly for the right reason, and revealing it, this thing you're revealing chesed of, of yes, Asiya, and then chesed of Yitzira, and Briya, and Atzillus. Right in the beginning in Tanya he says it, when he says the Yitzviris, and Slabish, and Atzillus, Briya, Yitzira, Asiya, all the way to Asiya Gashmit. Exactly, what you see the world is an outer garment for, for div- divinity. But with with a, with a critical uh, qualification, it's concealed. In other words, God is the world, but the world is not God. You cannot say that the trees and this is God. They're godliness. So basically, the point making here is that... Um, why was I making this point anyway? I forgot already. God is the world, the world is not God. God is the world, or God is in the world. However you define that. Who toughs the kol almon? The end dover toughs be. What's the lesson that he uses? That was the expression. Huh? You toughs the kol almon. Huh? You toughs the kol almon. Right. The end. What's the last second half? The less man, the toughs be. Klal. Yeah. When I say good, I mean they said there's an expression. Alts is got is alts and alts is got. There's that expression too. I, I'm distinguishing it between, uh, like, you know, like, uh, exactly, pan- pantheism or Spinoza. But the point being here is that, um, why was I elaborating on this whole thing about the Mashalim? Oh, on Atewa, Gol of Galifa, right. So when we when we say, Shir Atzmei Bekeyech, you start saying, one second, God has a mind and he's imagining in his mind what the world is going to be like? No, he's giving us a gift. God is saying, I created you in a way, the way I function. And I manifest myself in a functional fashion so you should relate to me. Just like when you make a plan. First you have nothing. Meaning, or you have many ideas. Infinite amount of ideas. And then you said, you know what? I'm going to focus now. And instead of infinite, which we do all the time. Saying, I'm not going to do everything. I'm going to now, right now, build my plan for today. Where, where, why did that, where does that come from? Remember, we're not self-made. Where does that come from that we... First, first, we have infinite possibilities, or many possibilities. Then we define one possibility and say, okay, now I'm going to put it, commit it to paper, build a team, build a business. No, I'm saying, but where is it rooted from? It's rooted from because we function, we function the way 
God functions. Now, did God have to function? Of course he doesn't have to. But he wants, that's what he wants. He wants an existence like this. So as a result of that desire, a whole process began that even in the divine, we can use this example that also in, within him he imagines and, and envisions something. If you take away, one second, if you take away, let's say, no, God doesn't envision. He wants a world, it suddenly pops into being and you wouldn't have this whole shiraz maybe keyech and no ishtalshlos. Then we have no relationship. Then we're talking about a God that does what he wants, which it's his right, but a relationship we might have with him. Because I can't relate to you. I don't know anything. I don't understand you at all. You know, men and women, for example, are very, very different. But it's a miracle that God created that there's some similarities. So they could somewhat have a connection. Okay. (laughs) But you know, he could have made it harder. Imagine he wouldn't even speak the same language. As it is, yeah. <laughs> um, the point being, it's, there's an interface, there's a place, of, there's a meeting point. Let's, let's put this, with a little bitl. And, and that meeting point, you get somewhere. If you have no bitl, and then, and then of course, you need to do something about it. My point is there's a, there's, there's a possibility for a common language. Whether you have it or not is another story. You know. So the, the, the same thing is here. God wants a relationship. So that's the way he functions. So it's not we, we function that way. That's why God functions that way. Whatever the reason that God wanted the structure as it is, the way the seichel, the way logic works, is that things begin with a plan and then you do it. Now, not everyone works that way. That's another problem. Not everyone, some people work and then they create a plan. You know that one, right? In Chalam. The guy was hungry in the morning and looking at it. They couldn't find, they had eggs, but they couldn't find a discover a... a uh, spatula to make the eggs so the guys have a great idea you know it's hot day let's crack the eggs put them on the straight and the sun will bake them and we'll have uh, we'll have uh, scrambled eggs Shabbos. not on Shabbos, Shabbos not the Torah you love. <laughs> okay so good so uh, it's, it's one of the Zhigan and Shuchmach the Chela Mises so the guy said okay so what happened he says he remained with his eggs and I remained with my plan you know what I mean <laughs> so sometimes people do things and then they start planning um, but the point being here is that, that, that we can relate to God and this is the whole beauty of it. This is selfish shirat that he wanted us to have that relationship so we can somewhat envision how it works. Now obviously with all the qualifications that it's not even there yet manifest and it's not defined, it's only possibility and it's not even talking about without the tzimtzum, it's bichlal, there's not even ten spheres. Gnuzis, as he said, doesn't mean it's hidden and, it's, and it's like behind a, uh, behind a wall or a closet. Hidden means that it's fundamentally not yet shaped, etc., etc. But you have an envisioning of how infinite manifests in finite. That we can imagine. So that's what we have here. So the Zaya says it all in one line. Without Chassidus, I mean, you could, you could start talking about it, but Chassidus not only explains what it means that it's God envisioning, it also explains how we can talk about God envisioning things in the first place. What do you mean he envisions things? I mean, why doesn't God just create? So the infinite transcendent light, Shir Ba'atzmei, Measured within himself, shir is such a good word, but it's so hard to translate. Klolos ha'el mizvishtalshmus, then all the worlds and then cosmic order. Va'el in sof atzmei seiv of a makiv kulam bashva. Ah, and the el in seiv itself, what happens after it's shir, after it envisions it, allocates, assesses, evaluates, whatever, measures. The el in sof, meaning what happens to all those possibilities, that transcendent dimension, that where it all originated from, that remains save of a makiv kulim bashva. So though it envisioned them as, as a given structure, it remains beyond. He's talking all about the Ratzon Pashat. He's still going to go back to the Ratzon Prati, the desire for each specific world. Right now we're speaking about the general desire. So what we have here is that the, the transcendent energy envisioned and, and measured within himself a finite structure, and that transcendent remains makif surrounds everything. That's obvious. It surrounds obvious. It encompasses. And before the worlds are actually come into being, you can't even say that he's sevev. Sevev of what? It's not nothing to surround. At that point, you say he encompasses everything. That's an interesting uh, addition. At that stage. 
Remember he said about Etzim and his pastors before. Remember he spoke in the previous two chapters back. He has the question there. Isn't Makif also Lifel? And his answer was, yeah, to, to, to Makif if impacts and has a function after it extends. But when you talk in the Etzim, in the root of it, it's just revealing the essence. So all you can say now about the Makif that it encompasses everything. So we have your three stages right here. You have before the Mosheviv. You have the essence or even the essence of the energy, and there's no, not, it didn't arise yet in his will, anything. That stage. Not Obviously not in time, you know, concept. No, there's also an air that level. Fine. Er, good. Then you have the rose in his desire, but it's our desire, general desire, of the close elements, and shir atzmei b'kayach, he's defined himself even ten spheres, and this, but this now has become a state. What is it? It encompasses everything. You can't say it surrounds it. You can't say it transcends it. There's nothing to transcend yet. There's no transcendence. As a matter of fact, the only thing that exists is transcendence. So it's not transcendence. Transcendence is when you're in a certain state and you want to transcend it. There, it's just a state that's beyond any definition. But it encompasses everything. That's what he says. And that, Etzema Er, it's called. We learned it before. Yeah. Etzema Er. Even before that. There's one even before infinite possibilities. There's even, and there's higher than that. There's a lot of levels. There's more than a few levels. It's not for right here. Okay. Okay. So even though we just said that it has a relationship, because as he said, it's in this infinite desire, in this in this um, infinite in the transcendent energy that arose, and that's where he defined the finite. Nevertheless, even 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 though Agam Shishirbats may, nevertheless, it's separate from them. Here he's saying now even higher. The primary save of the primary transcendence is even higher than what he's saying here, even higher than arising when it arose in his desire. For who this commission is bar. That's already a general awakening, a general, uh, a general um, uh, what is it? awakening. Commission is bar motivation, as we shall explain in the future. It's beyond now and then, beyond even the era bligvul that shir batsme. I said, in other words, there's all about tzene, and then shir shir batsme, and then there's higher than all about tzene. Because he says, "Rosh Chodesh." The side is called this basically like he wants to do something. Yeah, he says he's going to explain it. Uh, look, it comes down like this: there's the atzmos, there's going to be era kol batsim. Which is not being discussed here at all. That's a, that's a whole different level. Then there's Eir Atzmi. Etzema Eir. all it is, is revealing. That's all it knows. There's nothing else. There's no worlds, nothing. Within that Etzema Eir becomes a Seder's Kloli. That is Kedem Alei Sarotzen. But it's already getting getting closer. It's moving closer to it. Then there's Alei Sarat, now it arose in his desire, a defined desire. That, in turn, Shirat Me Bikeach. Uh, well, Alei Sarat and Shirat Me Bikeach is within the Alei Sarat. Here he's adding that the Alei Sarat, the, before he spoke, Alei Sarat is Shirat Me Bikeach. That's the ten spheres. But if you break it down, as he said, there's the Rotsen Kloli. Rotsen Aposhet, Sha'ola Britseine. Now you could say the Ratzin itself, fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You could say all of saying is the ten hidden spheres. Eren Sof Atzme is where it arose. And then there's a level before that. You don't have to say what I just said. I, I was just saying that there's almost four levels. You could say it's three. You understand what I just said? So in other words, there's the Seder's Kloli, there's all of Britzene, which is the Shir Atzme B'Kayach. Actually, it does say there's three. No, I'm sorry. Okay. 
Yeah, there is, because he's saying that after it arose in his will, after he defined Shir Atzmei, still it remains separate from it. What remains separate? Where it arose in his desire. And he's saying there's something even higher that arose in his desire, that he said this. See what I'm saying? Yeah, Okay, what part? What I just said, I, I'm just standing by what I said. Right, but it just threw me off for some reason. What, so what do you understand? Tell me what you understand. I'll tell you whether you got it. Okay, in it comes, comes from the sad, the sheer Gatsme, which is driven by Ratzon. And higher than that, we have... Uh, when the Ratzon is, remains a Makif, right? That's higher than it's Ratzon remains a Makif. And, uh, and that's the uh, horror, that's the... Uh, I'm going to get into trouble here, but that's fear saying this part. And then higher than that is the source of Kavli. So, so there's three levels right here. There's the ten spheres. There's the right, the right, the the, the sheer atzmi of the envisioning of the ten spheres, the structure. There's the rotsen, which is makif of, above that, and then now the said is above the rotsen. I never said that. Seva and makif are the same thing. So it also has to have a world to surround. So and Makif okay, are synonymous. Okay. The only thing he's saying here is that it doesn't surround, it encompasses everything. You can't use Makif that. either. It's the same word. Makif and Sovav means exactly the same thing. V'kailu kulam b'ashva achas. And this Ratzin encompasses all of them equally, literally, Bamish. Now he's adding a parenthesis, which I see is not short. It goes all the way to the middle of the next page. Okay? So be it. So let me just, before we go to this parenthesis and get more confused, let us... Um, Let's go back from the... Right. <coughs> okay, it's clear. He just didn't finish the topic yet. So bottom line, he's saying that... that, that, that just sum up everything till here. That, that, that He has the question, do we find levels also in Makifim, in the transcendence? He explains because there's a relationship between the transcendent and the imminent. And he began all the way in the root. That just like desire, in the example, affects the faculties and drives them, the same thing is the higher desire of God, or makif, which means is where, is where he envisioned the transcendent energy, the Eren Sefa is where he envisioned the energy that would become, def- that is defined, the ten spheres. And also afterwards, it impacts it. That's the key thing. So based on that, you have to say that it has a relationship to the premium. Therefore, you could say there's a general makif and a specific. Now, he's speaking about the general right now. What's the general makif? That's a general shapeless desire where God desired that t- the entire existence. Stira Hila, Golov Galifa. Once he desires, and the, you have the Shir Atzmei of the Ten Spheres, the Aaron Seif itself, that envisioned that, remains beyond it and above it. And encompasses everything. You can't call it Makiv there yet. So all you can do it says it encompasses everything. And yet and, and it remains apart from it. What he added was there's something even before that desire, which is the Yisaitis. That's what he said. So now we have is this Mark of Koli encompasses everything, even though in that desire arose a defined Shiratsme of the ten hidden spheres. And now we go to this long parenthesis. Huh? Now it goes like this. Not only 
Does the desire encompass everything? He's saying the shtalshul is gufa. The way they are encompassed in this desire, they're also equalized. What's the distinction between the two? I guess he's trying to say, okay, let's see what he's going to say. It looks like to me he's saying that even after the shtalshul comes into being, they, there's, a, there's the way they're seen from the perspective of that desire before the ten hidden spheres, and there they are as seen as one. So in other words, even though this is not in time, but he's talking about it after the ex- exists or after. Let's see what he says here. Like we learned before chapter 19, and 21, we discussed there that because they are completely united with the bleakvul, with the air, and the desire that wants them, so there's no metzius of them at all. The kamoi kein gamma elam is kamoi shein lifniat simsum. Same thing. The worlds, the way they are before the simsum, had einim bchinis metzius klal. They're not at all in existence. I'm not yet sure where he's going with this, so let's just read it. It's interesting uh, stuff here. Kamoi shein zbar leil bekam aduchtin, and like we discussed earlier, and in many different. Discourses be inyan asis at Rishima shalifnei at simtsum by the letters of the Rishima, the letters of the impression. We know after the simtsum, even though it concealed all the energy, there were letters remaining. She einim klal b'chinis mitzis dover chaz rishol. Letters with the building blocks of the world, right? Yeah, it's the kei chagvul, the kelim, the beginning of the kelim, not the eris. He spoke him. Well. He could say the ten hidden spheres are also the building blocks, if you be, want to be technical about it. They're both building blocks. One is the air and one is the keli. Let's put it this way. Without the Rishimu, if you only had the air, you'd have ten energies. You wouldn't have the substance. You wouldn't have the, the definition. The ACS that remain are like the foundations and the, the building of the world. So they're more tangible. They're more, they're How tangible do you think they are? We discussed this. Remember, I, I discussed this in the class. The air is also tangible, relatively speaking, because it's Eir HaChesed, Eir HaGvura. It's not just relative. The difference is Eir, even Eir HaChesed reveals its source, and Kaili doesn't reveal anything. That's the key. The Kaili's main focus is that the is built in the Kedis. That it's divine, but it's, it's like a table. That stage is not a table. Think of it, it's a concealed identity, whereas Eir HaChesed is a revealed identity. Only Chesed, not Gvura. That's the key key distinction. And you need both. That's the Eris and Kalim, the Kav is going to reveal Ezra Sagnuzis, according to the Shita here in Nayim Bays, and the and the Kushim will, will 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 give power for the the Kalim. So it's the real Kayakhahelam. When you say Eir Hagvul, Ezra Sagnuzis is not Kayakhahelam, it's Kayakhagvul. You say or Eirhagvul more specifically. When you say the Kalim, he spoke at length before. If you remember the chapters, he spoke the difference between Eir HaGvul and Keir HaGvul. The Sheir Sha'ar is when you say Eir HaChesed in ten hidden spheres, you're saying that it's, it's Chesed Gvura, even in the level of energy, and not uh, infinite spheres. When you say Kalim, you're talking now the Helam, the element of concealment. But the interesting thing is he's going to say here, remember then he also said, the Isi says, Shim Alei Noga Behemat Simtsum, that Simtsum didn't impact the actual letters themselves. They were there before, and remember, they were cons- right. The shimmy, the shimmy is, is, is gavul, though. It's, 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 means an impression, actually. It's an impression. But that's what you call it, gavul. Kayecha gavul. Yes, say he had something buried in the sand, and he had a windstorm, and, and, and it uncovered it. So. That's an example, on one example given. Yeah, there are many examples yeah. given. It didn't, it didn't touch, it didn't touch that whatever was there in the sand. The sand world was all affected by the, by the windstorm. Right? Yeah. In other words, the Kreich HaGvul, for God to be able to, the Kreich HaGvul, like he says, Naveh Yisakei, it's Kishem Sheyesh Lekech B'Bilti Bal Gvul, Kach Yesh Lekech B'Gvul. So before, the question is, what is that? Is that the Eir HaGvul or the Kreich HaGvul? So there's the two interpretations. I think before he used that on Eir. But you could also say that's the Kreich HaGvul to actually create um, concealed identity, self-contained identities. And then, when the Eir HaGvul, like you said, is, uh, is like removed, it's like this, the ocean. It move away the ocean, suddenly the objects emerge. So anyway, so it's going like this. 
So like we learned before, the in the Before that symptom, that's the difference. They're not a mitzis. You see in the ocean or in the sand, they're a mitzis. The only thing is you can't see that. They're not a mitzis at all. There's no God forbid anything anything substance there. That's why before the symptom, every I'm sorry, everything is in unity and they're all equalized. Yet, nevertheless, there are ten spheres, but they're pepshitas. They're completely shapeless and united. That's what he discussed earlier about the Esther Sphere of And now he also added about the Rishima, the Kalim. The root of the Kalim. But the Eden Sof, the divine infinite energy, surrounds them all equally. Meaning that compared to him, there's no there's no distinction of ten spheres at all. Only from their perspective, from their from their own uh, perspective, the and definitely from our perspective, meaning from below, Meaning, Arach means, Meaning, what means Arkeinu? Meaning, from the perspective of the revelations that come from those ten spheres, They're ten spheres and, and there's some type of order there. But you talk from the perspective of the Ainsaf, where they arose. Yeah. They're, they're, com, 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 they're completely equal and there's no distinction between spheres and ishtalshlus at all. That's what I mean. Yeah. 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 Meaning, hainu kamei, consider the ain safe. That's the truth. There's be'erach ain safe, there's be'erach atzmam, there's be'erach aleinu, arkeinu. There's three perspectives here. There's the perspective from below, so to speak, the things that emanate from the ten spheres, like the kav. Or the ten spheres, Natsilis, that's what means Arkenu. So there for sure there's structure. From their own perspective, there's also. But from the perspective of above, where they originated from there, it's all equalized. We'll see soon. See, I want to see where it's really going with this. What is it really qualifying here? And even though that infinite energy that we just said compared to that, they're all equal. Even though that was the one that she asked me, he's the, that that's the level that envisioned it all. There should be ten spheres. Ah, he's going back to that, like the Rotson. Nevertheless, it's not nitfiz by them. It's not contained. It's like the desire for something. Remember the example with desire? That desire wants you to move, wants the thing, but desire is not confined by and or contained by what it desires. It's not nitfuz them, it's not contained or grasped by them in a way that there should be any type of distinction from the perspective of God. And this is the meaning, this is what it means that the Ratzin, desire, even though it grasps all the faculties, and governs them, and guides them, it's like the same thing, who tov is baal kol alman, the less man the tough is bay, klal. Nevertheless, Ainim Tafsimbe, they cannot grasp him, it, boy, it, within it. Tafsim boy. Cannot grasp it. Within it. For Hainu Shainan Ditus Behem Liyas Bay Shinui. It's going back to the examples. Meaning, the desire is not Nitfiz Behem, it's not contained by them that there should be any impact on him. Remember, we spoke in Rotson, like the Eir Shemesh, makes no difference. It doesn't get stronger or weaker. When the when uh, when the when the faculties listen to him, contentment. He discussed the idea of being content, but the bottom line, it doesn't impact him. This is the example of where. This is why it's all coming back. That means that he's not contained by them. There should be a change through them. Why? Because he's, he's fundamentally higher than their distinctions. So their the way the, their game that they play, what they do, their specific thing, which is very important to them from the desire point of view, makes it, all he wants is a desire. The soul desires. That's all. He doesn't really care about it. He is not defined by their details. He does get a contentment. Which is he explained, and that's yeah, not yeah. The, that's not the. That's not 
No. That's a result of, not a, uh, not like a teacher becomes wiser. Or this Ratzon doesn't become stronger. Well, not like, you know. But it's saying a, the same thing is understood. Now he's answering the question. That even though that it arose in his desire. The general cosmic order. Nevertheless, the desire is not contained by it in any way. At all. The Kulam. And encompasses all of them equally. Interesting. I want to point out what he said before again. I think it's a tremendous line of Vart. I've, I've, I've never really saw it before. Maybe it's... The word transcendence for us is a big Kiddush because we live in a confined world and we're limited. So transcendence is like... Uh, I think. The root of transcendence from the perspective of God, because there's no limited world, all it is is just unity. And all it is is just everything is encompasses everything. I'm just distinguishing that, that what we call transcendence is rooted in a place of just simple, plain unity where only godliness... Um, I'm, just, uh, just, I'm just going back to that. For Inyan who, and the Inyan this is the... It's all, remember, still in the parentheses. It's a long parenthesis. Yeah. But inyan who dehin in his body, the inyan this is like we learned earlier. The er who sham shachus, sham shachus regularly my kolob chinas er. That air energy is such that all the transmissions, and revelations, everything is in the dimension of air. By the levat sham shachus the er makiv gufa. In other words. That means that in addition, besides the fact that the hamshach is the emak of gufu, that the transmissions of the transcendent energy itself, like the specific makifim of each world, they're all transmissions that are in the state of light and energy. In addition to that, is also now also that which transmits from it the er pnimi, like we said, the er pnimi comes from the er makif in the root, right? In its root, it's that hashara, that the infinite energy, the transcendent energy was mashayir, envisioned, the radiating within medil gvul, within measure and parameters. The air is the atzmei who b'chinas shefa al derech moshel. And this energy itself is like an example, like a shefa. Like he said before. Okay. Let me, let me, I'll explain what this means. It's, it's clear, but it needs a, just a little explanation. He's bringing together all the examples here also, Ratzin and Eir and everything. Remember, we learned before that Eir and Shefa is an example for Eir Makif and Eir Pnimi. Right? The three things. Air, there's no substance. It's only a reflection. Two, it doesn't impact and make a change in its source. And three, there's no effort involved. Yeah. But by by the by by Shemesh is Mukhrich and by Nefesh is Birot. That's the thing. Shefa, all three things. Shefa is substance, is something of substance being transmitted, which remains with the recipient, like Seichel. Two, it impacts the source, and three requires an investment, requires application. That's our premier makif. So now he said the first thing he said in the it was that with the example of rotsen he wanted to explain that even though the air makif desires and wants, and in it will arise the air primi, the sheer atzmi to define existence. Nevertheless, like desire, using the muscle of desire first. Desire impacts, but is not impacted. So from the perspective of the desire, everything is equal. Even though from the perspective of the spheres themselves, and definitely from below, from what the spheres reveal, meaning the revelation of spheres afterwards, there are, there's our distinction. He's saying the same thing we understand also from the example of air. That's what he's saying. That's what he's adding here. And, and it's more than that. Not the same thing. Inyan who? Uh, what is trans? What, what is what is transmitted from God? Is it air er or shefa? So we established two two things. There's an air. 
A, it reflects transcendent energy because it's not impacted all the reasons that I just said, like Rotsin. Pnimi, Er Pnimi is like Shefa. But now we've established that the Er Pnimi comes from the Er Makif. So what he's saying, he's adding something. That even though the Er Pnimi on its own is like a Shefa al Derech Moshel, but it is being, but from the perspective of Er Makif, it's transmitted like an Er. Meaning there's no impact. And there's no change. And there's no effort. And it's not substance from its perspective. That's what he's adding here. Right. So before it was like two, two forces. Like I said, that are two forces. They function differently. Now he's adding that that same energy that to us looks like Shefa and to itself looks like Shefa from the perspective of Imak, it looks like Ayr. Or is Ayr. That's what he's adding here. I mean, it's, it's just saying in these words, it's, 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 what's tremendous here is the detail. It's like the, the, the breakdown that there's... Usually when you look at this, these type of things were taught to us by the Mashpiyim. That the Rebbe himself should write this. is like he's interpreting Chassidus here. He's interpreting things that without saying other Maimorim, but with a far clearer explanation. These things we usually would guess or speculate, you know. Does he really mean this? Does he not? He's specifically spelling it out. So let's just read it again. Okay. So he's saying, in addition to what we said, that Er Makif itself is an Er, and not impacted, all the properties of Er as opposed to Shefa. So he's saying now another thing, even the Shefa that comes from it, from its perspective is Er. That's the bottom line, what he's saying here. That's the Chidosh here. can't use up God. <laughs> Something to think about. Very interesting. Now he's going back to the example. See, the examples now are meshing, are meshing together. Like the desire that affects in all the faculties, but not grasp, but is not contained by them. See, what he's looking for is this subtle place. How could something be the source of a thing that is defined and from its perspective should not be defined? This is this is like an unbelievable. Um, uh, in, in talk about the interface. This is a component of the interface that's critical. Because how do they meet? Same old question. Exactly. But it's interesting. But he's adding a perspective here. This is a dancing. Not necessarily. I mean, he talked about the two ions, the two levels of ion, the ion of Yeshamit, the ion of Yeshanivra. Uh, I mean, which which is which? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what you're asking me. Uh, obviously, I mean... This is, well, okay, it wasn't taken quite in that context. Here we see how he sees everything near the Maila and how we see everything in the Mata. So he even makes it seem to find that there's different targets. But we're looking at it from the, from the Mata now. And yes, we understand that at, at the Maila we see that there's, there's, not, there's, there's no real Shefa. We're seeing it from the Mata. We think, well, when we see the Mata, uh-huh. there is Shefa. Okay. We see, we see in the Marla from our Mata perspective, there's, there's no Shefa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what we're saying. Yeah. That's it. There he refers to chapter 59. In, in, in 57, where he talks about these two, the two perspectives, he refers to it. Yeah, you could say that this is adding explanation... What he said, asked there the question in 57, chapter 57, how could you say that is the market have it a pool or does it not? Does it impact or doesn't it impact? The answer is it impacts and it doesn't impact. In other words, it has a function or doesn't have a function. This is clear. It's clear here. Its result is a function, but it's, it itself remains beyond function because it's not nitvis. It's not contained by what it's accomplishing. See, when you talk about, let's say, shefa, shefa definitely has a function. Because it has to manifest, you have to put an effort, the whole substance and so on. It has no function. 
but air is here is teaching us that air impacts on function. It causes the function to be a function because the air is the one that is the one that's conveying the message to Shefa to be a Shefa. But from the perspective of air, it remains air. It's very interesting. It's basically it's almost like the servant of the king telling you to use your kechus pnimim internal faculties, but the order itself is not effect is, is not defined by that. In other words, if God says, um, "I want you to," uh, like when we say we say before about mitzvahs, there's the equalizer. Al te shekel ben kala b'chamura. So Baruch Atah Hashem alekein melchalom hashekel d'shem mitzvahs v'tzivano is a specific mitzvah. Or a specific blessing. So, from the perspective of, let's say, yes, that's what God wants. But if you ask the the Ratzin, the Ratzin says, yes, He wants this, and on that level, it's necessary. But from my perspective, it's all equal. It's basically two perspectives going into the same experience. One sees the detail, and one says that all that's relevant is the Ratzin alien, is the desire of God. That's what He's saying here. You're saying that I'm, I'm talking about the avoid of this. I'm making an application. The application of this would be, you know, and 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 you need both. So one, you, and you need the detail. The detail is not insignificant because that's exactly what the kavanah, the intention is. However, if you ask the air, the air sees it as an air, not as a shefa. Even shefa is air from the air's point of view. That's the bottom line. So even when you're doing a detail. All I'm really doing is I'm fulfilling the source, the Gilimin Atzen. Whatever desire, whatever the source wants, I'm, I'm expressing the source's interest. That's So far, yeah. Okay. 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 That affects all the faculties, and it's not gra- contained by them. Same thing, the infinite light, even though the imminent light, it's a, it's emergence and its emanation is from the transcendent light, as we said in chapter fifty-eight. You know, at length he explained it. Nevertheless, there it's in a state of air, of uh, this dispassionate light and energy. And not contained by them. And look what we learned earlier, chapter 27. That the Hashara, this envisioning, this allocation, this measuring, is the lowest level of Eir Sov. Meaning it's all within the state of Eir. Mm-hmm. So, in other words, even though this is going to be the root of Shefa, of something that transmits and is focusing on the container and needs to be internalized. And all that comes with it never lets its air. Uh, that's what he adds in the parentheses now. He added in the parentheses not only is this the, the, the Ratzin, the Save of Makav Kholi, remain a detached and apart and everything and encompasses everything? It means that even the existence that comes from it, from its perspective, is Eir. That's what he adds in the parentheses, basically. Then he goes on. Now he's talking about, he's going to talk the, the same thing. After the worlds came into being, he said, Eir Save of Makav this infinite energy, transcendent energy, surrounds and encompasses them. This is the great circle, the great sphere. That's before the Kav, as I said. Now that there's a Tzimtzum, all this he spoke about was before the Tzimtzum. So there's no Sev Makiv, it's all within the energy before the Tzimtzum. He spoke about a whole bunch of levels here. Now comes the Tzimtzum, and now the worlds emerge. Now there's room for them to emerge. Because he's creating, a, he's concealing the, con- the divine consciousness, all of it, and now something's going to emerge. It's going to start with a kav. There's a reshima, an impression in there, but that's concealed. So before the kav, now what do you have in the imagery? You have an igla gadol, all the light that surrounds all of existence. That light is rooted 
in the Ur Makif, in the transcendent energy, from where the hidden spheres emerged. Surround, but, uh, now it's surrounding the world. Now it's transcendence. Before there was no transcendence. It's within, but beyond. This is the big eagle, the great circle, that encompasses all of the cosmic order from the highest levels to the end of the lowest levels, all equally. Mo'una is the moin, is like the dwelling, the home, yeah. The home of the divine kedem. Before anything, Kedah means the original primordial home of God. And below it, how do you take Metach Zerayah We were thinking, Zerayah Salem, below it are the arms, the the, 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 the soldiers, the so- shoulders of the earth. Huh? But how do you say Metach Zerayah Salem? What do you say? Metach Zerayah Umetachas. That's Kedah. Ma'una liki Kedah. Umetach Zerayah Salem. And below this, Means after the symptom, in other words. Okay, the structure of existence. The Isab Medeshab, it says in Medeshab, the God is the Ma'ini, is the, like the true. Home of God of the world. The quintessence of Hu Inyan, Hu Mukemishalelem. And that's the end of Hu Mukemishalelem. He's the space of the world, the Ena Elam Mukemi, but the world is not his space. V'zeo metachez reyes elam shemakif es kulam. Metachez reyes elam. Right. Okay, metachez reyes elam shemakif es kulam. In other words, so he's meun eliki kedem. God is the the the, 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 the tr- container of it all, meaning it's beyond it all. I mean, sorry, he's the, he is the real space, but the, the world is only below him because it means that he remains surrounding around it. He encompasses it. This is the Igla Godl. On a lower level, this makif is also the level of Ak, Adam Kadme. This is the level of the lower purity, or the lower, not purity, the lower, the lower light, the lower, uh, there's a word for it, illumin, uh, illumination, no, luminary. That I was after the tzimtzum. This is the primordial thought, and the initial desire after the tzimtzum, that is, for all of existence, for the entire cosmic order. That also surrounds and encompasses them all equally. It's known that everything that will emerge in the worlds, that that come into being in the worlds, is all encompassed in the primordial thought of Adam Kadman, of the primordial man, and they're all equalized there. As it says, that he was able to to uh, gaze, umabit. And look, and safe would be foresee and mabit and gaze through all out safe until the end of the world. And they're all encompassed there. Skira. Skira is like an overview. They're all they're all encompassed there one glance and one skira, one overview, and one glance. Like it says elsewhere. And also after the world's come into being it's still is also Makif encompasses them all. The heavens are their abode of the eternal God, and underneath are His parentheses everlasting arms, parentheses power. So Elam is everlasting. Oh, here he's not touching everlasting. Here he's touching Elam uh, Mokim. Uh, so say again. The heavens are that's a parentheses the, the abode of the eternal God. And underneath are his, this is also parentheses, his everlasting arms. Okay, so he's touching like this. Then Enelikim Kobim is talking about the, the transcendent energy. That's the divine. Umetachas, and below it uh, is, is the world that that he gives, that he, that he basically he, he supports, that he supports. It's a different interpretation. It's not the word Elam, not everlasting. Here's that. Okay, fine. It basically is the reference to a Makif and a Pnimi. 
or makiv and the worlds. That's he's as he became a shem, he's beyond the worlds. Okay. Now he's saying that also ak afterwards is also kedua di guli ak magim atachtis asiyah, as it's known that the circles, the spheres of Adam Kadman reached all the way to the lowest parts of Asiya. So ak is like the big circle within the after the eagle agodl is outside of the of the the of the of the black hole. In the black hole itself, the first eagle is ak. So it's like the circle that encompasses everything in existence all the way, because the circle goes also below Asiyah. All this are the general, the microcosmic transcendent energies to all of the worlds. The higher, I call it luminary, what would we call Tehidah? How would you say it? Luminary, illumination, the higher... Tehira sometimes Shemayim, by the way, right? I think Tehira is also for sometimes heaven is called Tehira, like the higher heaven. Because what is it? Shemayim Tehira. What's the lotion? Shemayim Tehira Shemayim. What's the expression? There's a something. Whatever. Upon. Huh? Right. There's a few expressions like that. Okay. So the higher Tehira. Huh? Yeah. So Tehiri law is the higher is macro close to the is the is the macrocosmic mark of transcendence before the tzimtzum. Tehiri tadam is mark of close achrat tzimtzum, which is ak, is the general mark that's after the tzimtzum. Kamoi kenyish mark of pratim lechel elam befrat kamoi shiz ba. And the same thing, there are individual transcendent energies for each world, specifically as we shall discuss. So bottom line, what he established here. I mean, let's go back to the question he said, is there, are there levels in Makif, in Sev of Klaum? So he really didn't completely answer that there are levels, even though he did say, because what he established in this chapter is the relationship. See, last chapter was a discussion about how transcendence is everywhere. Makif is everywhere. It, it brings things into existence, it brings life, it brings additional energies and everything, but it's all concealed. So there's a certain so though it's all there, but it doesn't have a connection. Here he brings back how they have a connection. There's a relationship between Makav and Primi, albeit in a way that's detached, but one comes from the other. That's the key addition in this chapter. As a result of that, because it has a shaykhus, he says, the words he used are. Um, Imkain shaykh was a gamke Makav kholi Makav prati. Because there's a relationship between them, that's why you could say that there's a mark of Kloli, mark of Prati. But he only spoke about the mark of Kloli here. Primarily. Basically, once there's a relationship between them, so you could say there's the mark of, let's say the Kloli, how it is related to the ten hidden spheres. There's the mark of how it relates to all of existence. There's going to be the mark of Ak, which you spoke about. But he didn't actually spell out the distinctions between one and the next. He just established that once there's a relationship between the transcendent and the imminent, then just like the imminent has levels, you can say the transcendent has levels. But he's not discussed yet what those levels are. But he has established that the transcendent, in, uh, is, from its perspective, No, no. No. Yeah, but he did establish that the transcendent has a direct impact on the imminent, and and as, and from its perspective, it is beyond transcendent. While from the perspective of the worlds, or from that level itself, it's imminent. Now, uh, and then when it comes after the tzimtzum, so there's the two states that he discussed. One is. The way the, the, the transcendent energy is before the tzimtzum. It's not even transcendent. It's just beyond it all. And not and and uh, and and then there's after the tzimtzum, it now becomes a transcendent force that also is an all equalizer. That's essentially what he said here. Clearly, there's more going to be more coming about all this, and just uh, getting deeper into it. But that's what was established here. So should we conclude the mimer, or should we not? What? Okay, I shall conclude. Yeah. Yeah. Valpia now. According to the above, 
Yuvan Mashikasa will understand what it says, Kisait Sil Machoma Alevecha. What it says that you should go out to war on your enemies. This is the means the war with your animal soul. The Mukham is Rushaikh's Bekechis Primi Mani Bekechis Agiluim Shabanefish. This war, this battle, where's where is there a battle? It's only possible. Shaykh is possible in the level of the internal imminent faculties, meaning the faculties that are Giluim, Kechas are Giluim. The revealed faculties shed benefish in the spirit. Well, how do you do a, like it is like a, like above? We know like it's known. How do you do it? Like above, it's known. How do you do? It's known. The chizus achitzenim yochelias be'er pnimi. That the chizus achitzenim. Okay, explain that. The chizus achitzenim means ah. Is above or in the spiritual dimension? Means uh, yeah. Also, the Maila meaning not only the war down here on earth, there is a chitzenim also in the higher world. Yeah, it depends which world. So, what a chitzenim means literally means the the chitzes a chitzenim means that the the outer the out the outer the outer ones have some grasp. But it usually refers to when where there's some ability for them to wean uh, green energy. So, when there's a certain a certain for example. Where do bacteria infections fester? Where there's energy. So Chassidus speaks, speaks, I don't know what he's going to say here, we'll soon see, but Chassidus speaks that there's two ways that a, a, a negative force can get energy. One is either through the indifference of the air makif, so everything is equal. So it's like not watching, it doesn't care. It says like, Shmomis Yudayim Tetapish, like you can have the king, he's such a beautiful palace, and that's where the spiders uh, weave their webs, because there's so much, there's such almost like beyond everything. And there's the second is because of Ribu Yitzim Tzumim. On the contrary, the opposite. That the energy is flowing, but the energy is so weak, so they're very vulnerable. So one is almost because of, one is because it's beyond, and one that like almost like doesn't care, or is not watching. Huh? Yeah. And one is because the energy is so diminished, so there's a def- the defenses are down. Yeah. That's a two-way. So he's saying, but all this is possible only in the Eir Pnimi. Achizu Tzachitzenim can only come in the Eir Pnimi, in an imminent energy. The Fishabob Abkhinus Yislapshus. Because it comes in a manifest way, Shazawai Dei Tzimtzum Amir Ta'er. And that's through the concealment and the diminishing of the energy, Madreg Le Madreg, from level to level, Atshub Madreg Yisach Tachtenus, Mismaya Ta'er Biyesa, to the point, to the extent, then lowest level, the energy is increasingly diminished. That's why there can be a grasp. Like for example, there's a rule, two mentara, for example, purity and impurity. So we know that it's not physical purity and purity, and you don't take it off with a through a bath or a shower. Spiritual impurity. What is what is two mentara? So the language of chassidus and it would be that where there's a lot of kedusha, holiness, holy energy, the negative energy comes to. It's coming to feed. Where do you see uh, maggots come? They don't go where it's dry and arid. Under a rock, it's dark, it's moist. So they go up two places, where there's energy, but also where there's no one watching, so to speak. Where they're... So that's why, for example, dam hua nefesh. Why, why is dam? Why are we not allowed to eat the dam blood? And the kind of, all the food turns into blood anyway. So why don't just initially eat blood? That question is asked. Because Dhamma and Nefesh, Dham has so much intense holiness in it. It has so much life in it that it's very easy. If you eat blood, that's what it says. There'll be a Nikas HaChetzen. So it has to go through filters, so to speak. Same thing it says, for example, a body of a Jew is Metama. Not everybody, not every, not every physical corpse is impure. Why? Because where there's a lot of holiness, and once the soul is no longer there, that's where the negative energies come to go. That's why Tumas Nida. And all the worst tumors, the worst impurities come always where there's a lot of life. What, what's nida? Nida is the possibility of life. The cycle of a woman, that there was an egg that could have been fertilized and given life. That's where energy goes. So when there's, it's like, it's, that's where there's death. That's why the tumor's mess is such a powerful tumor because life is Life is the connection to its source. 
as soon as there's no life, that's where there's a lot, a lot of energy there. But as long as this neshama is alive and everything is going good, it protects it. That's why Kedesh Kedoshim, you can't just walk in. Not because, God forbid, something negative, because the positive, because so much energy there. One blemish, like Revav al Talmud Chacham, one blemish is already uh, the Kayan will die there. Right. Because you're talking about, think of it like you know the, the Jewish relativity theory. Three hairs on your head aren't much, but three hairs in the soup, you know, a, a, a piece of dust on your finger is in, insignificant. A piece of dust on your eye is extremely irritating. The, the higher, the more sensitive, the more powerful the force, the more every little thing matters. So therefore, where there's a lot of Gedusha, that's where they are. But as long as that Gedusha is protected, let's say, in a live human being, it can't be too much. But as soon as you take away certain defenses, that's when all the, all the clippers will come running. They come running. That's what they want. They want energy. Look, why do you need to, st- why do you need to sterilize a, a place where there's surgery? Because when you open the body and the internal organs, they have the most energy. And the body is closed, so you have all the layers. You have the, the layers, the epidermis, the skin, you have the muscles and nerves, you have the, 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 the outer skin, and you have the hair. I mean, which protects, protects from infections entering. But you open up a body, that's where the real energy is. Bacteria come running. And the nails? That's nails also. The reason you cut the nails, the hair, everything. This is about why we cover our hair. It's all, this is all the central explanation for all tumor. The defense, more defenseless. For example, the question is asked, why is it that a woman, before she marries, she wears long hair, and men shouldn't wear long hair. And after she marries, she covers her hair completely, and men don't. A beard on one hand. It's all it's put in, in Derech Mitzvah, many my marim. A beard is holy. The Levim had to shave their head every day in the Midbar. You know, there's constant contradictions. Is hair good or not good? Yeah, then. What, right. Yeah. So these, all these questions are brought. And the Kohanim had to cut their hair also. I think not daily. Daily? Not on a day. The, the Levim, that was daily, that one-time thing. Levim was a one-time thing. I had to cut all the hair. Right. The whole Yeah. I yeah. Right. So the question is not too long. So for example, Shimshin. Hair is the power of strength. A Nazir doesn't cut his hair. On the other hand, we don't grow long hair. So all these answers are answers because hair comes from Meichen, comes from a very high level, Cyrus, but it's in a diminished form. So when you have a lot of protection, it's fine. When you don't, that's where the clip is gathered because they, they can't go into the brain and get the energy. They, they go where the Cyrus are. Like, for example, lice will go in the hair because the, that's, where, that's where there's energy. But they can only go when it's not protected. It's, it's always the balance, how much protection and how much is not protection. For example, when a husband's with his wife, she's not, she's not supposed to cover her hair. Why? Because there, the gedusha of it is protecting the situation. The intimacy is bringing a very high level of gedusha into it. So then on the contrary, the hair is, 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 a, is a power, a good power. It's not a bad thing. It all comes down to what kind of world we live in. Now, if it was a world, if there was no Eichet Eitzadas, we wouldn't have these problems. That's why it says, Nida Tatayah Lo'asad Lo've. It says, Chavaz Dam Nida was not the Tumah. It says, it says, because there was no yet, there was no the clippers to gather. Not because, because so the Dam was, Dam Tor. That's it. There's nothing wrong with the Dam. It's been, when you live in a world where there's negative energies and they want something, that's when Tumah is possible. Here is really when it says, Ruach HaTumah Avim in Aretz, when Mashiach comes, the woman with not tumah, once you don't have negative energy, nothing is, is, is only, there's only Gedusha. It's vulnerable, but to what? There's nothing there to be vulnerable. So you know, vulnerability then is fine. Here is no energy to defend itself at certain times. So why does a woman have to like cover her chest and stuff like this? First of all, Tzni is a man has to also cover himself, yeah. number one. Let's make this clear. It's, everybody it's, it's not because of pro- 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 provocative, it's only external reason. The main reason? Is because the, the most gedusha is in the areas of sexuality. Why? The point is erva. The word erva, by the way, comes from the word. Erva comes from the word vulnerability. I think I once read. Yeah. First of all, in Judaism, there's no such thing as ugly or evil. There's, you know, just like the, the, the Ramban makes this whole letter, which some say was written because of the Christian views on, on sexuality. 
that you know that they get that it's it's it's, it's a to say dover gnai or dover moss that it's not ugly or something such. Sexuality's power is because it's kedusha because it can have the power to give birth, the power of life, the power of intimacy, love. That's why the, the pleasure is not the pleasure comes because of the kedusha. But wherever there's a lot of kedusha, there's always the other side. You know, I always whenever I speak about some, you know, I, I've written a lot about this shaitl because people deal with this. Look at advertising. Look what, what focus they put. The, a woman's hair is the biggest focus in most advertising that relates to anything that is like perfumes or fashion and so on. Because the hair has a lure. It has a power. There's no question about it. It's all about balance. The Rebbe is also very fascinating. He asked this question. Why is it that women before marriage are the Rebbe? That, that's the reason. Because once you're married and so called the sexual energy has been released, now it's very vulnerable. A woman before marriage doesn't have that. A woman so in the way she's protected. Be much than, uh, than a woman in that context, yeah. Today is Sadie Hawkins Day. I know. <laughs> Let's continue here. Okay. Anyway, the point I'm making is Achiz is Chitzen and Meshach by Pnimi. Because that's where they will come. That's where there's energy, because energy gets diminished. Visham Shaykh Muhammad, and that's where there can be a war. However, in the transcendent energy, there cannot be the grasping, the holding on to <laughs> the, 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 the hanging on to. Hanging would be a good word. You know, like a leech. Exactly that. A parasite. A parasite hangs on. Yeah, latches. On the contrary, the, the, the transcendent it blinds the eyes of the the out the outward ones, the outer forces. Yeah. I think that's why Keteris is Yudalif because Yudalif is Makif. Yud is Primi. Now that's why Keteris, their descent the, the, of the Keteris, essentially like, I mean the Rambam says the reason was to get rid of the smell of the base of and stuff like that. The components to have a nice scent. But spiritually speaking, it's because the scent comes reach. We'll learn later is makif, and has the power to to get rid of any type of uniqueness or chetzim that would come from the carbonus or other places. Yeah. Well, kamekenu benefesh. The same thing is benefesh in this in the soul of the person. That's when lamayla and nefesh. She says lamayla and nefesh. The beiris makif. See, these are good code words. When he says lamayla, he's spoken on a spiritual level, on a higher level. Nefesh is within us. The beiris makif from the nefesh, in the transcendent energies of the spirit of the soul. The hainu ba'vedish lamayla v'das and time v'das, which means in the work, in the service, in the worship. That's hot, that's super rational, super rational. Ein shach mochamaklal. There, there's no possibility of war at all. And when there's a revelation of the shapeless and the simple rotsen, pure raw rotsen, okay, good, pure and raw rotsen, pure and naked rotsen, it nullifies all outer stuff, all the, all the outer forces, the external forces. That's what Yom Kippur, they say the Yitzhar has no power, has no dominance, has no control. Because then Yom Kippur radiates from above the level of the transcendent. The same thing in the soul. One second. That radiates also the essence of the soul. That's why there's no so the Maile, you have the essence, and also in the soul, you have the essence of the soul, radiating Yom Kippur, that's why it doesn't have any control, the Yitzhah Harad. the Yitzhah Harad. Rak B'Kei Chesag so where is there a war, where is where do you have to have care, rather only in the K'Kei Chesag in the revealed faculty, Shein Al Pitam Vadas, that are rational. Sham Shaykh Achiza, that's where they can latch on, hang on. Ach, Al Zei, Avedish Al Pitam Vadas, however, this is Ach now. This is why we have the service that is rational service, Lasa Sabir Benef Shabamis, in order to cause the refinement of the animal soul. I know Aveda de Tvila, Bisbonus Belakus, which is the service of davening, prayer. When we contemplate in the divine, Binyanim Shein Basoga Dafka, in matters that are specifically comprehensible. comprehensible. And every individual, according to his measure of, of, of understanding. 
the tachlis hakavana, and the ultimate purpose is shagam haseichel hativi. That also the natural seichel, not only the seichel aliki, the natural seichel yevim v'yosik should understand and comprehend the seinyan aliki, the divine inyan, the divine concept v'hatev v'ili belakus, and the goodness and the superiority and the supremacy of the divine. Shai dezay you say v'gam ba'avel elikus, because through this he will be awakened also to have a love to godliness. In the beginning, it begins with submission and subjugation and suspending yourself. Initially, he has to agree to the bitl of the He should just agree, go along with it. With the, the divine soul's subjugation to God. That it should not be a, 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 a hindrance and a disturbance to the Nefeshalikis' expression. You know, at least don't bother. In other words, don't at least don't disturb. Like you know, sometimes you tell somebody. Yeah. Achagam who misayed about until the point the next stage is that he too, the Yitzh and Obas the Nefesh and Bam is also becomes awakened in Avish a Yitzh Belakuz Dafka. Then he should also desire Dafka, specifically godliness. The calls are Bederach Machala Machama. All this is in a form of war battle. Deliya Shaveh de Bekech Sam Tzumutzum Tzumim being that this is a work that's in the diminished and the concealed faculties, not in the Meir Makif. Now you're dealing on the ground in a very specific way. Which have a commensurate proportion ratio to the natural faculties of a human being. So you're not just talking, ordering and commanding from Ratzin, transcendent, which is Masama, which blinds. You're talking about getting involved. It's a war. A war means you're engaging. Remember said we spoke before that Kechus Primim engage, like a teacher with a student. So there's resistance. When the sun shines, there's no Muhammad. When the soul gives life, there's no war. But when there's an immersion, an application, there's there's a what did I just say, engagement. There's engaging. Then you're there's keches tivim. There's a natural forces, and the nefesh Obama says, "Hey, look, I'm interested in something else." So there's a battle going on. How do you aim them leneged? They stand. So those natural faculties stand in a position. They're in the parliament. Right. Well, kamei meshas Time of davening is time of war. Only thing is that the divine soul, the way it's supposed to be, of course, dominates, overpowers, is gabr. Um, strengthens himself. But more, it's gabr al. It dominates over. Because it was given power and strength to uh, control, to, da- to dominate over it, to control it. Where does it get this power from? That comes from the transcendent energies in the nefesh. Or kamayim must be an eshet tzaddik, like we say. They swear him to be a tzaddik, like we say in the beginning in Masech Tanida, in Tanya. If you do a kushi, ech must be an nefesh alaguf. The problem is not with the soul. You take in this, you take, tell him the soul, swear, take an oath that you're not going to, you're going to be a tzaddik. But the problem is the soul is a tzaddik before it comes down here. So how can you swear? How can, it's like me saying to you, take a note, don't be a tzaddik, when you have to now deal with someone else. That's the problem. So how do you take, the, take an oath, the, give an oath to the soul on the body? The answer is must be, and also is the word seveya, meaning to sate. To sate, to, to, to fill, to, like savata, to fill with energy, to give it energy, to empower. This is the power that's given to the, to the divine soul from the essence of the soul. Meaning from the transcendent, it shall have the power to dominate over the animal soul. And when the divine soul is refined, the animal soul, it in, in turn it adds in it additional increasing energies. Because the real power, the real advantage, the real uh, a deeper quality of energy comes dafke, It comes specifically from darkness. The power you want to really harvest, uh, really um, uh, thresh the land. meaning that should be a lot of uh, grain. Abundant grain is through keich sheir. It's the axe that plows the earth. Right, it's a metaphor that, that, that more strength comes from the animal. And this is the meaning that when you'll go out to war, you don't say out, go out, unless to someone who's, who's dwelling within. Here, Pnim means 
inner means the transcendent forces in the soul. There is no war at all. It's not possible any war. But you have to go out from Bifnim. It's interesting. Pnim usually means Pnim. It's here. Pnim means Makiv. It means to go out from within. Because you said before, the real Makiv is really the Pnim of Elikus. Because it's a state that's beyond any structure. It's really, uh, Pnimi is the chitz and the makiv is like the inner. It says you have to go outside of the Pnim, outside of the makiv, from Haina Ave, the Shalpi Tamvadaz, the Afghan, that means the service that specifically with the rational, the Kanshai, Hamachame, here, it's possible war, Iman Nefesham Bamas, with the animal soul. Ukadaihi, Hiamachame Hazes, Mepna Yusun, Eir Shabadiza. And it's worth it. The effort is worth it. This war is worth it. Because of the issue, the advantage of the energy that will come through it. The ain't aiming him the benefits. The ain't aiming him say the mission shall be free. You don't say go leave, except if someone's dwelling within. The high no shakech has a who may have etzim and a shame dafke shemesham nim shakech and if shall gis is gabriel and if shabamis. In other words, from its mashman, like he said in the beginning of the mimer, that the power to go out and to do what you got to do out there, the war comes from when you were inside. Because you know what's the point? Why? Of course, of course. What's the point to tell people? Technically, you say someone leave. You only tell someone leave who is inside. Why do we need to know that? Because the power to do what you have to do outside comes because you once were inside. So that means that the koyach, the power from the essence of the soul, the transcendent, from there comes the power to the animal soul, the divine soul to overpower the animal soul. However, now all the impact that the divine soul has on the animal soul, it's all in the form of iskafia. Suppressing. suppressing. Not transforming. And what it says afterwards, God will give you in their hands. That's now in a higher level. That's the form of transformation. To transform the darkness to light. To transform the, the, the personality of the animal soul to good. That a person does not have in his own the power, that's what's given to him from above. That's when God will circumcise your heart. That comes from above. David is from the service from below, our initiative, in our self generated initiative, is you will, umaltem, and you shall. It circumcise the orla, the blockage of your hearts. She That's through the service that is rational. When you say God will circumcise, that's the love, the super rational love. Which that we give from that's given from above. And that is what transforms darkness to light. Now it says in the pasuk, that that's the Rosh Hashanah, those four letters, Eslavav, Eslavav, is the acronym for El. Because this Mimer is said in El. It's a Siseitse. Because then, that month of El, we have the revelation of Ruusa Deliba, the desire of the heart, that's super rational. And causes that there should be the transformation of the darkness. And that's the meaning, and God will give. But the order for this is first you need to preface it, to introduce it first, that you will go out to war with your power. As much as you can achieve with the animal soul. And through that afterwards will be God will give you them in your in, in your hands. This is also that the revelations of El and Rosh Hashanah are dependent on the work we do all year round. All year the main primary work is with the mind and the heart, which means the rational work, primi. Imminent, internal. And commensurate to the work that we do all year. Then you're given in El Rosh Hashanah, the ten days of Tshuva, the revelation of the essence of the soul, the transcendent. And this is going out, this means go out to war. To go out from within in order to serve with Aveda the work of davening al pitam vadas in a rational way, b'gdei lifal habitl b'nev shabam is in order to cause the subjugation of the animal soul, shal yitzir dafka nasa yusun er. Because through this specifically comes the the, the powerful, the, I mean, additional powerful energy. Ve'ein em nem se'el l'misha shara b'fnim, you don't say, go leave, except to someone who's dwelling within. Ha'inu shakei chalzeo ma'makif m'sha b'nev shrak shuzeh b'hel. The power for this comes from the makifim of the nefesh, except there it's concealed. 
then that's why it's a and afterwards, God gives you them in your hand. He gives you from above his gala sets in the Shama, the higher, the, the transcendent essence of the soul. Through this, you have the transformation. So the Aveda goes like this. is your work. All year round. That power to do that work comes from Makib, but then it's still the Helam. So you can only achieve a Skafia. Suppressing. Then God says, you did your part. With the power of the makiv, I will now give you the makiv begoli, revealed way, which is which is el rosh hashanah says mitzvah, and then you can transform. El is good. It says it says kitzur kitzur. It's at the levels. It starts el. You give a mitzvah rachman. Let's do the summary. Kitzur v'tzorach lahav v'halo yesh makivim protim leilmus. We said that makiv it doesn't have levels. So isn't it a fact that makiv they're also specific makiv for the world? So, so there's levels. The Indian of this is the makiv yeshli makom makom shachas aleir primi v'nimshech mimenu. That the transcendence has some connection relationship with the imminent v'nimshech mimenu, and the imminent is, is extends from it, is uh, transmitted from it. Valkein yesh makiv kol makiv and pratim. And that's why there's a general makif and there's specific, because it's connected to the imminent, which with his levels. So that's really the answer, the connection. Ubchinis tira la shalifniat simsum ubchinis makif koli. Tihiri la, that higher um, state. Before the simsum is the general makif, ukeil shosha eris kulam bashva, and encompasses all the roots of the energies, meaning also the ten hidden spheres, all equally. Because relative, from the perspective of Einsef, there's no distinction. Even though it, it envisioned and allocated and measured it in the, 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 the root of the energies, it's not contained by it. They're also all part of the infinite light in the, in the lowest level of it. So two things that he's saying. One, it's not yet, yeah, right. One, that it's not contained by it, and it's all part of the infinite light. So even though the first thing you could say it's there, in like a shefa, but it's not contained, and then saying that itself is also air. And after, and also afterwards, after they are revealed and it comes into being, it still surrounds them. Anak, which is called the lower tahira, the lower heaven or the lower luminary or whatever luminous state, is also. A mark of Kloli, also a general mark of Alpia. Now he's born Posse Kiseitse. And according to the above, he explained the verse of Kiseitse. Make sure you mind. Just pressing. Yeah, so let me conclude. We did pages, uh, chapter 59, concluded Mimer for 15, Discourse 15, pages 109.